Confucius, uh, by contrast to the kinds of de definitions of happiness we have in the West, Confucian uh, philosophy sees happiness as a sort of a, co a collective phenomenon. The fact that happiness, we are defined by uh, the groups that we are in, the, our family, uh, the societies that we live in, the, the companies that we uh, are part of, and our relationships with those groups. There are a lot of words related to happiness. Desire, pleasure, right. mm -hmm. hedonism, mm -hmm. and the list goes on. So to Confucius, it's none of those words alone. Mm. That, in fact, is one of the f features that sort of contrast the Confucian notion of a, of a good life with a sort of Western notion of a good life. So for, for Confucius, this notion of happiness is not merely a, ma a matter of uh, physical, sensual pleasure, is, is a more of a, of a holistic kind of, an, a, a kind of a situation where uh, you live in conjunction with other human beings and the sense of self is broader. So uh, Western societies see the unit of culture as being the individual, the individual's freedom, the individual's autonomy, and the individual's ability to pursue the life that, that means something to them is paramount. Uh, Confucius saw the basic unit of society as the family. And in fact, the family, a healthy family and a cultured family was, was essential to the functioning of the state. The feeling of, of what the good life would be is not one of self-fulfillment, but of the total fulfillment of all those connections in your life. Talking about happiness and the so-called individualism versus collectivism, you see research in the West flourishing about Confucius, Confucius version of happiness. Yes, in fact, you know, one of the most popular courses at Harvard right now is a course in Chinese philosophy. They have hundreds of students take the course and, and they say it changes their life. One of the aspects of Confucianism that's hardest to convey for a lot of students is this notion of ritual. Confucius' notion of ritual was, was a, total, a, a totalistic sort of notion of ritual. And in fact, his realization is something that's, that's helping a lot of foreigners in the West develop a better system of explaining morality, of, of the moral system of, of, of humankind. And that ritual is a part of it. If you stop and think about it, everything in your life is ritual, is, a, is accompanied by ritual. We think of ritual like someone saluting a soldier or, or, you know, ritual bowing. But actually, the way you use your body in everyday life and the way you use your, your face and your head all convey this connect, the different kinds of connectedness that we have. You remember in the, in the Confucius classics, they talk a lot about how the master sat, how he placed his mat, how he drank his tea, and so forth. These are not little things. So for example, how we use our heads. If I'm talking to you on the internet, you can't really see this. But when we're talking here, if I say, Tanway, did you send me that file that you were supposed to the other day? I'm pointing a finger at you and I'm looking right at you. It's almost like I'm a superior, right? If I'm saying, uh, Tanway, did, did you send me that file that I asked for the other day? My head is bowed and I'm expressing either equality or a kind of a subservience to you, which can make negotiate the, the connection between us and make it very clear. One of the reasons we're so unhappy now is we're doing all these interactions online where you can't see the ritual gestures, the pat on the back, the hug, sometimes the, this kind of thing. It helps how you said, that's very good, it's correct, but it's, it's augmented when I say, that's very good, that's correct. There's a kind of a happy dopamine rush when you get this, right? Probably one of the biggest influences of Confucianism now in the West as people are being to, to reimagine it are certain kind of cross-cultural studies. Moral philosophy is a very hot topic right now. And part of the reason for that is we're, we're uh, experiencing this conflict in the West and particularly in the United States with opposing forces on two sides that have different moral systems. If you look at, issue, at issues like abortion, if you look at issues like capital punishment, at issues like uh, racism and so forth, there's this notion of how do we see these uh, moral issues spelled out in a society where we have to reach some kind of consensus. And this is not something that a lot of Western philosophy and Western uh, frameworks have a good handle on. We tend to th see people as maximize the happiness of the individual and all the other things will fall into place. And we're finding out that that is not absolutely not the case. Maximizing the happiness of the individual re results in schisms, in conflicts, in, in, and uh, just absolutely unmendable conflicts that lead, lead to, to violent conflict and, out, and war. So people are now trying to study what is a more optimal way of, a, of ordering a society 
that starts from different principles and that starts from a basic kind of a ritual, ritualistic shows of goodwill uh, that can, first of all, set the tone for a sort of a um, peaceful kind of collaboration and compromise, which is so important in ritual, right? A lot of it is compromising your own uh, status, your, your sense of self-worth, and so and for the benefit of the other person.